just wait for like a minute you know to have more people join us then we can just get right, right to it i'm super excited about today's show though i mean even though you know man i'm like hmm, hey Ella, abra abra you only miss something you only miss something we have to discuss this after this show welcome so great to see you welcome 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 everyone welcome in the next like um few seconds we're just going to hit right at eight and then we start but by the way how are you guys doing hmm, do you see my t-shirt and do you see this do you see this i'm going to talk about that in a minute ah just a minute um awesome stuff all right <laughs> i love you too but you already know oh my god it's so great to have everyone here good evening good evening good evening before we start we'll just say a word of prayer and then we hit right to it Father Lord, we thank you for today. Thank you for another time like this. Thank you for your Fed Talks. Thank you for how far you have helped us. Thank you for another program that we are having today. Thank you for what you are set to do. Lord, we commit everything to your hands. We pray that you will take preeminence. Thank you for our guest. Thank you because you're going to speak through him. Thank you because today's program will help, will transform lives, will encourage people. Everything will go well to the glory of your name. At the end, all we have every single glorify your name in Jesus. Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen and amen all right so welcome again we're back now good the apple of love my sister how are you welcome sis the apple of love last month was out of this world you know if that talks turned one in april but me that's i'm supposed to be the host of the effect talks <laughs> i thought it was june but then again, I want to genuinely appreciate you guys. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. I mean, I was totally blown away. I, I remember, I remember after the show last month, I mean, I went to the parlor and I saw everybody wearing this branded t-shirts. That's why I purposely wore it again today. This branded t-shirt celebrates me first at one. And I'm like, my God, you guys, how did you do this? And then of course, my husband has did this very lovely so we branded the entire environment effect thank you so much i mean if not for god if not for you guys who keep coming out who keep supporting i mean i don't know where we would be today but thank you for being here for over one year and we're going to be two again in april like super excited about that i promise i won't miss the date this time around all right so i want to appreciate my husband so gosh he's such an amazing human thank you for the Support, babe. I'm so 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 grateful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. All right, so today we're going to be talking about something so interesting. In fact, I can't tell you that I know the exact hundred percent of how everything is going to go, but I know that we're going to have a very great time today. I'm going to be talking with Steve Harris, the very popular Steve Harris. He's going to be talking to us about his journey starting over is what we tagged it as you know everybody knows steve harris but he's coming from somewhere right he has he had i mean there, there might be some bits of him that you don't know which you will know today before he became who he is today that all of us now know about so we're going to talk about that um 
progression starting from the scratch to where we are today it's going to be an interesting time i'm so excited about it i don't even know why so while while um i'm going to quickly read his um profile then i would add him to my life all right all right welcome Marco. welcome great to see you steve harris finally called mr ruthless execution is privileged to be a trusted authority in the fields of life and business strategy a highly sought after management consultant business accelerator and author and is the chief executive Officer of Education. He's one of the most influential life and business coaches in Nigeria. His podcast has been rated among the top 15 in the training category in iTunes and has been downloaded over 300,000 times. That's a lot. His online courses have taken I've been taken over by over 2,000 people and his weekly emails reach well over 6,000. I'm one of the people. <laughs> He's a management consultant with experience spanning 15 years, a UNYFP Young Ambassador for Peace and is regarded as a trusted authority in the field of life and coaching and business strategies. Steve has designed, managed and facilitated several customer service and personal mastery training programs, management and leadership retreats for several organizations. <laughs> All right. Name is in several organizations, including Oracle, GT Bank, Union Bank, today I see Access Bank. Yes, I know. Hi, Bas. Hi, Steve. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. So great to have you here. Steve is here. Steve is here. Woo, woo, woo. Thank you so much for being a part of today's live. Welcome. How are you? I, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, I don't know if it's me, but it seems like your, your network is a little bit frozen from my end or it's breaking, but i um, super glad to be here. Really? Okay, just a minute. I need to be sure. Guys, can you hear me? So that I'll not just be excited for nothing. Can you all hear me? Do we need to do this again? It seems a little sketchy from my end. It seems a little sketchy. I don't know. I, I think yours is breaking in and out, though. Hi, Timmy. Right. Hi, Timmy. Okay. Oh, uh, great. Okay. Oh, can, you, can you guys hear me well? Oh, you, okay, they said they can hear me. Hmm. Amazing. Because I can hear you, too. So I'm loud and clear. Okay, you guys can hear me. All right, maybe, what I'll do, yes, maybe please. I'll log off and log back on because maybe it's from my end because it's breaking. Okay. It's breaking from mine, though. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Okay, because okay. I'm seeing feedback that you guys can hear me. Okay, so guys, while we wait for Steve to come back, I'm going to continue with that very long profile. Yes, it was for a bit, but better now. Okay. Um. So what was I? Um, in 2007, Steve managed and led a highly successful culture transformation project for the management and over 600 staff of West African land cement Waco. In that same year, he co-led and championed a four-month culture transformation project. Yeah, because I could hear him very well, but I mean, let's just try again. Let's see how this works now. Hopefully, by God's grace, it will definitely be better. So just keeping my fingers crossed there. He has been featured in Forbes Africa. Is this better now? Welcome back, Steve. Is it better? Much better. Hi. Yes. Welcome. Super excited to be here. I'm really excited. I don't know why, but you know, you're really excited. That's I know, right? <laughs> I'm sure that by the end of today's show, the excitement would, I mean, the reason for the excitement and joy would be evident, right? Because um, I, I feel like every time I'm excited about something, it means that something good about to happen. So I know that today's program will be a really good time. So welcome. Thank you so much for honoring the invitation, even at short notice, for accepting to be on your pet talk. Thank you so much. You guys, let's do the way we do. Let's post him some love. Let's tell him welcome. We're excited to have Cause, him. Because there, are, you there are a lot of people day. who are really upset that I'm on your show because I've turned so many people down. So there are a lot of people who are really Oh my so, God. Yeah. Sorry, sorry everyone, but I mean, what can I say? I'm human. I have to enjoy, <laughs> I have to pride in the glory right now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. In. All right, so that we don't waste time, I'm just going to get straight to it. Everyone knows Steve Harris. You know, I mean, there's, um, well, most people, almost everyone knows Steve Harris. And we know you for who you are, mm, for what you do in terms of your 
coaching, your trainings, and all that stuff. And then we're going to get there, but I want us to backtrack a bit because I know a bit of the story, but I'm just going to pretend like I don't know anything. All right, I have some questions here, and I know that some people would also have questions as we go on in the um, show. So I'm just going to be asking you different questions, and you answer as I ask, so that you know answer all the questions in in or you want you want speaking. All right. So let's go. Um, I'm going to first start with your background, your background, like your family, your um, education. So let's start from there. So tell us a bit about you, how you started off, your background. Just that's just where we start. Um, well, I mean, the, the executive summary of, you know, who I am and where I'm coming from. Uh, my parents are Nigerian. Uh, my parents um, are entrepreneurs. Um, I'd say that we were lower maybe lower middle class. I don't even think we're middle class. I'd say we're like upper lower class, <laughs> as the case may be. <laughs> so we're upper lower class. Right, wow. Um, and, you know, my parents raised us with um, the importance of education. Um, I studied in Nigeria. I studied in the UK as a kid, came back to Nigeria, um, got into the University of Benin uh, to study industrial math. That didn't go very well. <laughs> that didn't okay. go very well because I, I got kicked out of school uh, in my third year of school. Um, and then I got into uh, Madonna, Madonna University for about seven months and I kicked myself out. Uh, so I'm a two time, technically, I am a two time college dropout. But like I always say to people, don't be a fool, stay in school. Um, but yeah, so that's where I'm coming from. I'm a lover of education. Um, you know, I'm Constantly yeah. just trying to improve myself, you know what I mean? And basically what I do now is help, my, help entrepreneurs become highly profitable. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm going to I'm going to go back to that bit of living school. So the first one, industrial math, then the second one, Madonna. So what the first one you were kicked out. Do you want to tell us a bit about what happened? Um well yeah, sure. Um so Basically, when I got into the University of Benin, um, I wanted to study engineering, but you know, like we say in Nigeria, they gave me industrial math. I, yeah, I, didn't make it, I wasn't smart enough, but I, you know, eventually I got into math. And at the time, and I, I hear till till date, it, it was, and I hear still is, perhaps the most corrupt department in school. And at the time, I was, if you had, a, if you had an F and you wanted to get an E, you would pay five k. If you had an F, you wanted to get you pay 10k just choose the grade you want yeah. and it was that bad so long wow. story short um, um in my first year i was doing very well second year i kind of got distracted finer things in life parties girls you know the whole nine yards um but then i i i was put on probation in my second year i repeated the year um also because i i didn't play ball you know what i mean i didn't block i didn't go get, give my lecturers money and stuff like that so the bunch of who didn't right. do that were put on a list and long story short in my Second year, sorry, in my second semester, 300 levels. Mm. I go to the notice board to see my grades. And then I see those five words that no college kid wants to see. You know, candidates is advice to withdraw. Um, and I get kicked out of school wow. in, my, in my second semester, 300 level. Um, and I found out that one of the reasons that I flunked was not just because I didn't play ball, was because I was very close to a girl who was, uh, who my course advisor at the time was very interested in. Um, so I was wow. blocking his runs, and so he blocked my runs. <laughs> this one is not nice. This one is serious blocking. My yeah. God, OMG! So I mean, so how did how did this make you feel? What was going through your mind at that time? How did you feel? Um, well, the honest God truth: depressed, suicidal. Um, because I've always been mm -hmm. smarter than the average bear. You know what I mean? I've always been the one who people regard yeah. as most likely to succeed. I've never, I've never flunked a class prior to that time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it made me guess everything mm -hmm. about myself. Um, and then getting kicked out, I'm the mm -hmm. first, first son and first child of my parents and having to get back home and show mm -hmm. that you're a failure, you have nothing to show for it was so embarrassing. Um, I would remember yeah. that relatives would come mm -hmm. visit and they'd see me at home. And when they see me at home, I, I just say, oh, I just came back for a break. You know, I'm going back next week. Next week, they'll come. They'll still see me. They'll come up with another story. After a while, I stopped. You know, I just started disappearing when relatives would come over. Um, eventually, the word got out that I got kicked out of school. And, of course, it led me down a deep, dark road. Um, depression. Yeah. Um, substance abuse. You know, I mean, I tried. 
tried mm. drinking, I tried smoking. I, I, I did it all. I tried mm. Yahoo, you know, none of which I advise anyone to try. Um, you know, okay. so it led me even suicide. I mean, I contemplated it twice, but the only reason I, mm. the only reason I didn't go through it was I said, you know, you know, hell is real. And if I die, you know, you can't, you can't have hell twice. You can't have hell on earth and hell forever. Right. You know, it's either you have hell here and heaven forever, but you can't, can't, you just can't screw up both mm -hmm. ways. You know what I mean? But, um, but to yeah. be honest, if, if I could, if I could guarantee that I would still arrive, you know, if somebody comes to me and say, you know, I'd like you to go through what you've gone through with the guarantee that you'll get, to, you'll still be where you are, but I need you to go back to where you came from. Would mm -hmm. you do it? And the answer is yes, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd go through. I wouldn't change a thing. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Great. Okay. So, um, so first of all, what did your parents say? Let's, let's talk a bit about your parents. What, 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 were, what were they like then? I mean, when you had to come back home with the whole result thing and all that, how did that go with family? Well, I mean, parents. Well, luckily they didn't kill me. So that's the, that's, that's something to be thankful for. Um, but to be honest, I, I remember the day that I got back home. Um, I expected my parents to just go full gangster on me. Um, but I walked into the house and I, my mother and my father had designed, my, my mom is artistic, so she had designed some posters that she put around the, around the house. And she said, you know, it's not far, it's, it's how well we believe in you. You know, you still are, you know. You know? Wow. So they put all those motivating, encouraging things. It wow. actually it made me cry because, I, you know, if they had flogged me, it would have been better. You know what I mean? But they put all yeah. those things to yeah. me and that broke me even more. Um, so yeah, they were, they were amazing. Mm. You know, they, they tried, they spent their money. Um, but you got to recognize that they also had three other kids apart from me. So there was only so much they could do for me if I was not willing to do the rest for myself. So yeah, but they were, they were amazing. Wow. wow that is, I'm in shock <laughs> because Nigerian, typical Nigerian friends that I know, what? They will welcome me. I, I'm just trying to imagine my pops see back then. They will think it's what my mom sees now and she's a tight girl. She will finish you with big things like how? How? I mean, now this is this 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 tells a lot about how to handle I'm I'm just trying to imagine what was going through their mind and why they did what they did. Because I'm sure they would have processed a lot of things before you finally got yeah, well, I, I, I think for <laughs> there's them, no normal I think for them, you know, in, in their defense that I think they realized that I was very close to the edge that I just needed a little bit of a push mm -hmm. and I'd fall over the edge. Um, so they knew that, that mm -hmm. this boy was already, he beat it. I, I beat him myself up because I'd never failed before. It wasn't like I was doing drugs. It wasn't like I was in a wow. cult. It wasn't I was doing any of those things. I was putting in the work, but I didn't get the results. So, but I recognized that, you know, I think they recognized the moment they saw mm -hmm. how bad it, I, it, I took it, they probably realized that if they flogged mm -hmm. me, you know, this boy would just look for rat poison and just do the rest. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Amazing. That's a good one. I really, I really appreciate that, and I would, I'll keep that somewhere with me. I'm sure a lot of people will keep that somewhere because I mean, especially those who have children. In terms of nobody prays for a child to fail, but I mean, his life. So how to handle different situations. With All right. So let's quickly move. So then you went to Madonna. So why did you leave Madonna? Man, I, I, for you know, no disrespect to the school, but you know, for me, I was in a bad place in time, so it was like a glorified secondary school. Mm -hmm. uh, because here I was, who you know, in Uniben, who I, I you know, I'd, I'd spent five years in a school for a four year course, and then I come back, I, I come to Madonna, start mm -hmm. from first year all over again. And my classmates at the time were 16 yeah. year old girls and maybe 18 year old boys, and at that time, I was like maybe like five, mm -hmm. so I had to shave my mustache, shave my beard. Um, so, you know, came up with a story that I just came back from the U.S. And, you know, so I just came to the school and whatever. Um, but for me, it was much of a glorified secondary school. I, I remember one of the reasons I left. Cause no disrespect to the school. I'm sure they do amazing. So, but I remember that there was a course that they were teaching in. They were teaching English. And the lecturer was teaching English in evil. And I was like, come, no, hell no. You can't no friggin' way, man. So I raised my hand. I was wow. like, excuse me. Hello. I'm sorry, man. But listen, man. I don't speak Igbo, and how can you teach English in Igbo? This makes no freaking sense. So I just, I just got, you know, I just, so the, guy, the guy told me to come out, told me to kneel down. I was like, nigga, no. You know, so he to, to, told me to come out and, you know, he wants to get, get me to cut grass. I was like, listen, man, I've got asthma. Ain't gonna happen. You know, you know what I mean? So, 
cut grass in I'll university. Tell you, man, for real, wow. They gave me portion or told me to go wash toilets or something like that. So um, I think that day was the day that I was like, no, nah, I'm done. No, nah, no way. Um, but beyond the school, it wasn't their fault, but wow. beyond the school, I think mentally I, I'd already checked out because my, my younger one, my, mm -hmm. I remember my little sister, um, who at that time was already working in a bank. She graduated and she was working in a bank. Uh, my little mm -hmm. brother was in third year um, in, in Uniben and my last sister mm -hmm. was in first year um, in Covenant. So they were going, you know, their lives were mm -hmm. in fast forward, so to speak, and my life was in fast rewind. You know what I mean? So I knew that mentally I could wow. handle it because I was the one who was supposed to be providing. Mm -hmm. I was the one who was supposed to send money to my parents. But here I was back in the middle of nowhere, um, kneeling down, you know, in the school where they were teaching, using people to teach English. I was like, no, let me go on hosel. <laughs> you know, let me go on hosel. It's too late working, man. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to process your, um, your mental state at that time. Everything that was running through your mind, you know, maybe things like, maybe, can anything come out of me? Can I, can I achieve stuff in life? Were you in that place? And how did, I mean, what did you do from then? As in, were you in that place with all those obviously negative things and all that? And maybe people around you, what people around you say, who look down on you and all that stuff. How did you, how were you handling that thing? Um, well, well, before I answer that, let me just um, tell your followers. So please, if, you know, if you're watching this, please share the video. Let your followers know that if that talks and Steve Harris are live so that, you know, y'all don't want to miss this because I ain't going to say this twice. So please share the video so that uh, people can know that if that talks is on. Thank you. Right. Um, okay. So, but to answer your question directly, um, every day I was in a bad place. Every day I was in a bad place. And when I was mm -hmm. in Uniben, I was I was a model student, so to speak. You know, I was serious. I was, I was serious. I you know I followed God. I do did all the you know I, you know ate my cornflakes. Said, you know said said my prayers mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. Uh, but when I got to Madonna, I felt like God had let me down. You know, so I became I became mm -hmm. the opposite. I did a total one eighty. So I was like, listen, God, I don't care about you, man. Mm -hmm. I was following you, and you following you got me kicked out of school. You know what I mean? So, you know, yeah. just, so as I drive through the gates, I remember as we're driving through the gates, I muttered a prayer under my breath, and I was like, "Listen, Lord, you know, heal me, protect me, do whatever it is you do, but stay the hell away from me. Don't, I don't want you near me. I don't want to have a relationship with you." So I got into the school, and I became someone else. You know, I became someone else. Um, but I was in a bad place mentally. I was depressed. I was angry. I was very angry. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, and I remember one day that I was in the school and. There was, I just had this thought drop in my mind and I said to myself one day that two things are going to happen before I leave the school. I'm either going to kill someone or someone's going to kill me because I had this rage and anger. Um, so it really messed me yeah. up. So I knew that leaving the school ultimately was for the best mm -hmm. and I don't regret it uh, one bit. Wow, amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm going to ask you how you... I mean, I think that's next. I'm going to, before I ask you how you got out of that space. So, when you left Madonna, what did you do next? Um, I went back home. <laughs> I went back home. Um, <laughs> I had nothing to do, so to speak. So, um, I just, you know, like I said, I try to see if I could hustle because money has a voice. You know, so my my that's you know my younger sister was working. She was a banker. My brothers, everyone was doing great, and I didn't have any money. So I figured that you know what, I need to go hustle. Um, so I hung out with a couple of friends mm. of mine who were doing some very unsavory and quite shady things. Um, and I joined them to see and the road for wealth, you know, that pursuit of power. You know, I joined them mm. to do the whole Yahoo stuff, you know, for like maybe a couple of months. And, you know, I had this epiphany one day that, you know, I don't know why, but I just got this feeling of dread that they will catch me. You know what I mean? That they will, EFCC will bust. And it's me they will catch. They won't catch these other guys though, because it's me they will catch. So I just had that sense of foreboding, knowing that something was going to happen. So mm. I, I left that. Um, and, you know, my frustration with that, you know, I, obviously I couldn't, you know, I, I, you know nothing was working. Um, I remember uh, applying mm. to jobs, you know, and, you know, no one was going to give me a chance because I didn't have a CV. I didn't have, a, I didn't have no class. Mm. I actually distinctly remember mm. an interview that I was, uh, my sister had recommended because now my sister left the bank. And then she started flying and she, she started flying and uh, working for an airline and started flying all over the world. And then she uh, told me about an airline that was recruiting uh, for, for cabin crew. And so she mm -hmm. asked, she, she just said to me, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Just go. 
So I went for the interview, you know, we were like, I don't know, several hundred people who were waiting outside for the interview for the test. Um, and I decided to just blend in and just be a part of it. So I sat there in the interview, just pretending like I was supposed to be there, wrote the test, which I, which, which I passed, um, did the oral, which I passed. And at the end of the day, we were shortlisted from maybe a couple of hundred people to about 20. Um, and I was one of those 20. They gave us mm. numbers one to 20, and my number was one. Um, and so they called us and said, you, wow. you all have uh, meetings with the head of human resource. Um, so, I, you know, so I was number one. And so I walked in there. Uh, I walked in there for the meeting and uh, the head of HR says to me, so tell me, tell me about yourself, tell me who you are. And I start talking and uh, in about five minutes of having a conversation, he was like, listen, man, you are exactly the person we are looking for. You know, let me have your papers. Um, and the moment he says, let wow. me have your papers, I knew I was in trouble. So let me have your papers. I said, I don't have them. I was like, what do you mean you don't have them? Did you forget them at home? I, I said, no, sir, I didn't forget them. I don't have them. He says, what do you mean you don't have them? I said, I, I dropped out of school. He said, what? I said, I, I didn't finish school. He said, eh, he said, what are you doing here? I said, sir, I, I just said I should try my luck, man. I, you know, I just said I should try. And, you know, with a look of so much pain mm. um, in his eyes, he looked at me and said, he, he said, I'm so sorry, you know, but our company policy says that we can't hire anyone who doesn't have a first degree. And I'm sorry this is over. Wow. You know, so he shook my hand. I wanted to cry in the interview but I, I remember that there were like 19 other guys outside who were if i if i came out crying all of them are gonna be like yeah so you know <laughs> what i mean so i just walked out of there had my held high shook their head yeah. walked out of the local airport crossed over the street to the those railway crossing and i, I sat by the, by the railway crossing and i started crying i was looking for a train to run me the hell over mm -hmm. um i was crying wow. because i because i for me i felt like you know, Lord, you know, why get me so close? How can I be so close to so far? You know, how can I almost how can I almost have the job? And unfortunately for me, I had a lot of almost experiences. I had a lot of almost almost got the breakthrough, almost got the job, almost got this, almost, and nothing seemed to pan out. So for me, I would have been better, so to speak, if I never got close. But getting close was always doing it somehow. Yeah. So, so that made me yeah. feel worse. Uh messed with my mind even bit more mm -hmm. so yeah but, I, but yeah, yeah i kept trying <laughs> wow gosh i did that um i mean i mean like wow wow almost i mean all those almost stories are like the most painful and i totally agree it's better when you don't even smell it like there's this adage don't smell what you're not going to eat don't smell it then you know that okay there's nothing wow amazing stuff all right so um i mean i like the journey so far so what changed everything? What was the turning point? At what point did you, did you get like, should I call it a break? That did you see that, oh, so I can even do something with myself? What, what changed? How did this whole, you know, negative, should I call it journey? How did it turn around? Um, well, to be honest, it's actually mentorship. Um, I, I was privileged to have a couple of men mm -hmm. um, give me a chance at different times, you know what I mean? So. I had the pastor of then the House on the Rock, Lagos, um, which is now Grace Assembly uh, Lagos, which is a pastor, Femi Paul. Um, he, you know, he, he took a chance on me. Um, I had another gentleman, um, Charles mm -hmm. Um He's a brand expert. He took a chance on me. And of course, I had Fela Durotoy. So I'm going to just talk very quickly about what each three, each person did. Um, so I was a member of the church. <clears throat> Just, just tell us, tell us how you approach yeah. them. What made you approach yeah. them, right? How you had the connection with them, and then what made you say that? Oh, I want this person to mentor me, or how they even decided to be your mentor? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest, the first one, uh, uh, Femi Paul, was my pastor, and so I was a member of the church. And um, for, you know, obviously, when all these things are messing with you, God some, somehow just gets into the equation. And I remember that he, he, yeah. he had put on the on the and the church announcement that they were looking for an office administrator and also an office assistant or no a pastor's assistant uh executive assistant personal assistant that's the word personal assistant and um office administrator um but the caveat was both roles required a first degree um so i remember i walked into my pastor's office you know i you know i asked for a meeting with him and i said to him i said listen man um I'm done with following God. I'm done because God has screwed me over and the devil is recruiting. I'm just going to notice that mm -hmm. I'm about yeah. to leave church and I'm just going to join the devil. Whatever job he's doing, I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. So this is my final, you know, I just came to let you know. So I was in that bad place. 
And my pastor, God bless him, just said, you know what, no, come, okay, you know what, come. Like, you, know, you, you speak well, you're very responsible, you're very respectful, come and be my PA. And I became his PA, so I started driving, um, you know, errands yeah. and things. So shout out to Pastor Femi Paul, he took a chance on me. Um, Charles Otsuor, mm -hmm. um, you know, is a friend of my father's. And so, you know, um, you know, my father gave, you know, um, you know, um, put a word for me and um, he hired me as, a, as an office assistant. Um, I was in that role for about four months. So Charles did a favor for my father, but I was there for about four months. But eventually um, my paths crossed with um, Fela Durotwe, who had come to the church uh, to minister. And, <clears throat> and while he was speaking, um, I remember that I had this, you know, I'm not, I'm not even going to front. I, you know, I, I, I felt God say to me that um, he said to me that this is what I have created you to do. You know, and I'm looking at on the mm -hmm. stage and I'm saying, you know, this dude is a preacher. This dude is a preacher. Lord, I ain't going to follow you. There's no way I'm going to be a preacher. You know, you screwed up my life. Come on, man. There's no way I'm going to work for you. This guy always mm -hmm. works for you. Um, you know, but back and forth, you know, at the end of the day, um, when Fela was done, I, I felt led to give him a seed or sow a seed, but I didn't have any money because I was, I was at my brokest. Um, but I remember, so I pulled off yeah. my wristwatch, which was my only valuable possession. And I took it, took it off and I sewed it into his life, just, you know, gave it to him as a gift to say thank you. Um, and he took the watch and he prayed for me. And I was like, ah, hey amen, no. So, you know, I walked away. Then Fela called me, you know, then he prayed and prophesied. And I was like, oh, okay, amen, Lord, I'm in, whatever, man, amen. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I walked away, he called me again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he gave me his number. And um, when he gave me his number, um, he just said, you know, call me, let's talk, you know, but for me, I, I respected him too much to call him um, because I don't think that mentors, I don't think your mentors are your friends. I think mentors are guides. I think mentors are people who are experienced. You have to respect the journey, their experience. Um, so every, yeah. so what I would do, because I didn't want, I didn't want him to forget me, but I didn't want to be close to him, you know, because I didn't have anything to offer. Um, so what I would do was every yeah. Monday, I would send him an SMS and I would say, oh, you know, sir, this week, May God bless you. May he increase your business. May his, you know, may his grace shine upon you in Jesus' name, Steve Harris. And I say, send, send, send him a prayer every week, you know, even when I didn't have credits, you know, some, some days I didn't have airtime. Fell out, send me a text, so I didn't get my prayer. You know what I mean? So, but that, that was the opening door, so to speak, of our relationship, which we've kept over the last 16 years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow, amazing stuff. So, that means um, your... You didn't even know at that time that I can, I can, and this is what I'm going to do. Yours was like, should I say an inspiration from God? Absolutely. That Absolutely. This is like, Absolutely. I, I, and with this, and I like, please go. Go ahead, Jay. Okay, so I said, and I like the mentor, I like the mentorship part, right? I like how, because I'm thinking for anyone who is in that dark place, I'm not sure people can, I, I don't think people come out of dark places alone. Right. I don't think, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, right? I feel like God will send you maybe friends, relationships, people that would help pull you out. Because what they want is just take you real down mm -hmm. and all that. So, yeah, like someone says, men mentors play a vital role. Awesome stuff. So, now that you started your journey with um. Um, for and all that. So, how did your own? How did you now get the courage, the confidence, the boldness to start your own thing? How did that happen? Um, well, I well I worked with Fela for over five years, um, in which he you know he taught me the ropes, and um, for me, I was just very content to be the best number two to the best number one. You know, I was I, I've never mm. been an ambitious person. I've never been. I mean, I remember I had a girlfriend break up with me once because she said to me, how long are you going to work with Fela? I said, until God says I shouldn't. And she was like, oh, I don't have a... She, mm. she, well, she broke up with me for, you know, I'm happy with my wife, way happier. So, um, but yeah, so, mm. so for me, we, you know, I worked for over five and a half years. And again, it was that thing about, you know, the Lord speaking to me again and saying, you know, I want you to leave. Mm. And for me, it was the, I didn't want to leave because I was very content. I was very happy. Um, I had no desire to run my own business. I was very satisfied helping him build his. Um, but, you know, sometimes yeah. God, you know, changes the, you know, the course of your life so that he can give you the cause. Mm. Um, 
Awesome. And, you know, and so, you know, I got a word to leave and I did. I obeyed maybe like six months after hearing. Uh, but when I did, you know, it was perhaps the worst time. You know, I had about 20K in my accounts. My wife had left her job and so she was home. Um, she was pregnant, which was a testimony. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, our rent was going to be due in a couple of months. So here I was, 20 grand, pregnant wife, rent due in three months, scared to death. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to take care of this, you know, this lady. Um, all at, all mm. at the same time, not competing with my previous organization. Because, you know, I had, because I was the head of our consulting yeah. group. So I had all the contacts, all the H&Is, all the clients call yeah. me, right? And, you know, some other people yeah. would take the business. But if when they call me, I would call the office and say, oh, this organization is reaching out to you, but they called me. Please reach out to them. And it was very mm. hard to do because, of course, I was broke. Up. <laughs> but I don't. Yeah. I, I, I believe that you don't, you don't, you don't use your hand to remove the seed or take somebody else's harvest. You know what I mean? So it was, it was imperative for me to stay the course. And I said, if God was going to supply my needs, He would supply my needs, not giving me somebody. Mm -hmm. So I, so, so that happened. And um, yeah, but you know, in, 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 in maybe three days of staying at home, um, my 20 K turned to 17 K. And I knew I had, you know, 17 days to turn my life around. So I'm sitting down at home and I'm, I'm talking to God like, okay, so here I am. I've quit my job. What, what next? I don't have a plan. I don't have a degree. I can't go and mm -hmm. submit my CV to ask for a job. I don't have a business. Yeah. You know, but then he reminded me of something that I say that it's not what you don't have mm -hmm. that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know mm -hmm. how to use. So he asked me, he said, if you want to make any amount of money in a year, how much would you like to make? I said 88 million naira, you know, imagination is free, right? So I said 88 million bucks. So he said, mm -hmm. how would you make it? So I broke it down. I said, well, if I could get, if I start my business and I get 10 clients to pay me 5 million naira, that's 50 million naira. If I write a book, because I had this idea to write a book, if I write a book, um, you know, I could get a thousand people to pay me 2K, 3K, that's 3 million naira. I should have broke down the 88 million bucks, but you know, after when I Done. Yeah. I have like 88 million there in heavenly places and 17k in my bank accounts but you know long story short because time will not permit wow. but in in 10 months um my business grew from zero to 17 million naira in 10 months um mm. without staff wow. without an office but just me sitting so to speak sitting down to discover what i carried what 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 was inside of me um i generated mm. million, the next year 51 million and so on and so forth. So it's been a very interesting ride. Awesome. Wow, it definitely has been. Right. So there's a question here. Let me quickly take that before I continue. Um, what was the transition mentally from being a two-time dropout to being a reputable life coach? Um, you know, it's, it's quite interesting because I think I do have a bit of schizophrenia. Um, and I say that from the, from, from the best perspective. So one part of me, the, the college dropout side of me still thinks I'm, I'm dreaming, right? So the college dropout is a, so I, mm. one part of me feels like I'm in my parents' house in Yanopaja, um, asleep in my bedroom over, <laughs> you know, my lap, my, my mother's computer. Mm. And the last, and is afraid to think of the last 15 years has been a dream. Um, so afraid right. to wake up. So that's the one side of me. The second side of me says, mm -hmm. the second side of me says, um, if I could ever meet Steve Harris, who graduated from school, you know, who, who had his ducks in a row, who graduated, you know, top of his class or near the top of his class. If I could ever meet that guy, um, I want him to look at me um, and wish he was me. You know what I mean? I want that guy mm -hmm. and how successful he is. I want him to look at me and wish he had my life. Um, so that's what motivates awesome. me. So, one part of me is afraid I'm dreaming and doesn't want to wake up. The other part of me is like, if I could ever meet that that mm -hmm. other dude, he better he better wish he was me. So that drives me to keep on going. Amazing, amazing stuff. Wow. So um, when you were home, right I'm before so at the point when you were when you were trying to, I mean, figure out what next to do. You had your wife and all that stuff. Would you say that that point? pushed you even the desperation to you know friend for your family to be a husband a father and all that would you say that was even more of a motivation to 
to be who you are right now? Do you think that if you were still maybe very comfortable and all that, do you think you would have been who you are today right now? Do you think you would have taken this step if you were still comfortable as the um, uh, number two to the number one? Um, for, well, first of all, before I answer that, um, I, I want to give a shout out to my brother and friend. Um, he's on the call, Stephen Uchiduno. Um, Steve uh, Punto, as you know, we call ourselves. He and I were in, he and I were in Uniben together, and um, he's been a brother. He's been a friend for the last yes. over twenty years. So he was with me when I dropped out of school and all that jazz. So shout out to you, bro. Um, yeah. so shout, shout out. out. So, um, but second to your question, um, I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think I would have been that same person. I think, like I said before, you know, sometimes God will change the course or the direction of your life so that he will give you the cause for your life. And I think that um, sometimes when you're in that place and <clears throat> sometimes when you're in that place of ease and comfort and you feel like you've settled, God sometimes is in that place where he needs to disrupt you because he's calling you higher, you know, um, calling higher. You higher and higher, you know, like Tyler Perry says, higher is waiting, you know, but you know, in order to move mm. from one level to another, is uncomfortable. So it's like, um, give you an example. Um, if you are, <clears throat> if you're rated a one, if you're, if you, if you're, if you're, if you're a number between one and ten, let's say you're a ten, and all the other people in your circle mm -hmm. are sevens and eights, they will naturally gravitate towards you because you're the ten. You know what I mean? You're the, you're the highest on the totem yeah. pole. But when you, when you recognize yeah. that higher is waiting, that requires you to go to a new level, eleven to twenty, where you are yeah. now the lowest on that new level and you were the mm. biggest on your previous. So unfortunately, a lot of us don't want to make that transition. We want to stay where we were, or where we are, as the highest on the lowest level, instead of coming to the place where we are the lowest on the highest level. You know what I mean? And that's where that comfort yeah. comes in. So yeah, I don't think I'd be the same. Mm. If, I was the, if, I, if I remained as the highest on the lowest level, I don't think I'll be the lowest on the highest level. Amazing stuff. You need to write a lot of books. All these in your quotes, all these lines. I'm trying to keep going. I don't know. If they just come, well, I'm not thinking they, about it, to be honest. Um, they don't come, right? Mm. Lord, I mean, big Almighty, stuff. So that's what it is. Wow, great stuff. So, um, now I want to talk about the challenges of starting your own brand. And I'm sure that a lot of people want to know these bits, right? You know, starting... I mean, because people who go into yeah. the line of entrepreneurship is new, is new, except God gives you good, loyal people that will help you join you. But even, even if you have the best of people, right, there's still a lot of work. So what are the challenges that you had or that you know that entrepreneurs will have and all that, and how did you handle them and overcome them in this year's journey? Uh, well, I think my most significant challenge was um, positioning myself differently. Um, and I say that because mm. I would go to, you know, as a consultant, I'd get a lot of um, invitations from organizations to do work and stuff like that, or I'll pitch work. Um, and, you know, I used to, you know, I'd, I'd go to speak and I'd do an amazing, <laughs> excuse me, an amazing job. And at the end of the day, people would pay me, a, 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 they'll pay me an, uh, a great compliment, which I began to feel very uncomfortable with. And so they'll say things like, oh, you're so, mm -hmm. you're fantastic. You remind me of someone. You remind me of someone. Do you know Fela Durutwe? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah, you remind me of him. And I'm like, yeah, I used to work with him. So it's mm -hmm. a great comment. It's a great compliment. But I started noticing that in reminding people of somebody else, they did not remember who I was. Because if you remind people of somebody wow. else, they won't remember who you are. So I started saying, how do I... How do I make sure they remember me and not re not me reminding them of somebody else? Right? Um, so one of the things, I mean, so subconsciously, one of the things I started doing was I started growing my beard out. So, you know, so, because they would say, oh, you look like Fela, which is fantastic because Fela is a very good looking man. So it's another great compliment. But I wanted, I wanted, pe I wanted people to see me. So I said, you know, let me start grow this beard first. Let me grow the beard, you know, to at least let them, let there be a little bit of difference. Uh, but then I started positioning myself a little differently as the alternative to a fella. Um, and what that meant was, even yeah. though I could not compete, so to speak, with his brand, he, you know, it's like, I, I, I remember, I, I've used this meta metaphor before, that the, the sun and the moon need each other. Um, the sun rules the day and the moon rules the night. And the sun gets yeah. way more airtime than the moon. People talk, ah, the sun is hot, the sun is shining, the sun is this, the sun is out, this sun not here. Yeah, but people yeah. don't talk about the moon like that. When last did you say it? You, yeah. you ignore the moon, the moon is there, you ignore it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so if the moon begins to beef the sun and say, in fact, this sun is getting all the spotlight, I need to remove the sun so that people will be talking about the moon. The moon mm -hmm. will lose out. Why? Because mm -hmm. the moon is relevant because it stands in alignment mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. the sun. So the moon does not need to exert awesome. its own light. It just needs to reflect the light of something else. So I recognize that if, if I needed to be positioned differently, I needed to position myself behind the sun so that while there, when mm. there's only one sun, there's only one moon, and there are millions of stars, I didn't want to be a star. Yeah. So I said, I don't want to be a star. Mm. If the sun is not available, then let me be the moon. You know what I mean? So I started mm. altern alternating and saying, if I was charging five million, and the stars were charging 1 million, the moon, I will charge 3.5 million, right? And I will say to them mm -hmm. that, listen, Fela is, Fela is not going to be, if Fela is not available, you can definitely call me. Why? Because I have worked with him, I understand, da 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 da, -da. But not just only that, I still have his, ex his expertise, mm -hmm. and I have my own special mm -hmm. source as well. So you're getting two for the price of one. Mm -hmm. You'll get Fela, Fela is absolutely amazing, mm -hmm. but you'll get me, I have a mix of fella, and I have, I have like 50% fella and 100% me. So you get 150%, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah. of course, when people gave me the opportunity, um, I was very deliberate to make them re remember me and me not remind them of somebody else. Um, so, yeah, so, awesome. that, so, that, so positioning was the first thing that was hard to do. Then um, I think the second thing perhaps would be um, human capital. People will come and go, to be honest. People will come and go. Um, and if they come and go, um, I find that a lot of businesses invest in their people and not in their structure. So I'm going to say this very quickly. Don't invest in your people. Train your people. Invest in your structure. I'll say that again. Train your people, but invest in your structure. So what happens is entrepreneurs invest in their people. They give them all the assets, you know, right. they train them, which is fantastic. They build the business on the person. Mm -hmm. And when the person leaves, the business comes down and the entrepreneur mm -hmm. has to start all over again. Build a system that makes it easy yeah. that whoever comes into your system, it, it's like, it, it's, it, you know, they can, the system will take care of it itself. Um, so that's important. And the third mm -hmm. thing I'll talk about is um, that I struggled with, not really struggled, I got in trouble with, was um, taxes, not paying my taxes. Um, I didn't know, I didn't understand taxes at all. So I kind of figured, because I was making a lot of money, I felt like my clients that were banks, of course, were paying withholding tax. I didn't know that I had to pay VAT. I didn't understand none of that stuff. Um, and then FIR, mm -hmm. you know, hit me with like a 5 million Naira tax bill in my first year of business. I couldn't drive past FIR without having wow. a heart attack, without having cardiac, high blood pressure. <laughs> um, but thankfully, we got a tax consultant. Mm -hmm. We sorted that out. And I've, I've, I've been in the very good books of the FIRS and the LIRS since that day. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Wow. So, I mean, I like what you said about positioning yourself because the honest reality is that for every entrepreneur, whatever it is what we're doing, a lot of other people are doing what it is that people do. If you're a bank, if, you're, if you sell things on Instagram, a lot of us are doing stuff, right? Everybody's there's no, I don't think, I don't know if there's any unique business again. Like, there's, there are photographers, there are videographers, there are, so everybody, there's, you know. So, how do you encourage people because to um, get their individuality, to become a name? What are the, maybe that's the practical steps that people need to take, especially entrepreneurs, so that they can have a name, even with the numerous competitors, numerous people that are doing almost everything that they are doing. What are the practical steps that you took and that you can advise you to take as an entrepreneur that would distinguish you from other people that are doing um, Well, I'd, I'd say authenticity is key. You know, you got to be authentic. You got to be your authentic self. Um, I found that one of the reasons I was reminding people of Fela was because I was not being authentic to myself. Um, so I had to sit down and, you know, mm -hmm. analyze myself and say, what kind of person am I? You know, I've, I've, always been, mm. I've always been a little bit contrary or controversial as the case may be. Um, I've never been a yes man. If you're, you know, I'm, you know, give you an example. When I watch TV shows like um, maybe like American Idol, um, the, 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 the judges that appeal to me are people like Simon Cowell. So 
Simon, yeah. Simon is telling you like you should not even think about, about having a music career. Forget about it. You're not good enough. That's the kind of person I. A lot yeah. of people are like, oh my god, you can't say that. No, you can't say that, right? But that's who I am, right? I I, I noticed that you know, um, if 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 it's in football, um, I was always. I always found myself resonating with people like, you know, maybe Jose Mourinho, who would say that he's the special one, you know, or Zlatan or Ronaldo. I'm not a Messi fan. I'm a Ronaldo fan. So people say Ronaldo is arrogant. Mourinho is arrogant. This person is, I'm like, that's me. That's who I am. So first, so I had to own it. I just had to own it. You no, know, I have to apologize about it at all. You know what I mean? So in my coaching business, in my consulting business, I looked around and I said, most of my friends who are consultants and coaches are amazing. All of them are amazing. Um, but many of them are the same. They're like pastor types. They're pastoral. They're shepherds. They're all good guys, which is great. I'm a good guy too. But um, I'm not that mm -hmm. good a good guy. So I'm more of the bad guy than the good guy. So I said, okay, you know what? Can I become very good like, the very good mm -hmm. bad guy? You know what I'm saying? I'm not the hero. I'm the anti-hero. Those guys are Superman. I'm like... Batman or Deadpool or something like that, right? That's, mm. Those are the kinds of things that resonate with me. So it was being authentic to myself, you know what I mean? So I started talking about things mm. that I found out that other people perhaps were not comfortable in saying. So give you an example, like, you know, right. I was doing podcasts then and I, I'll talk about things. So maybe my other guys will be talking about, you know, no sex before marriage and da 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 And, I'm, and me, on the other hand, I'm saying things like, I'm teaching, let me teach you how to flirt. They're like, ah, Steve, are you freaking kidding me? I say, we don't want to have sex before. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are sent to the Jews. Me, I'm sent to the Gentiles. You guys are sent to take care of the 99 sheep. God has sent me to look after the one, to go after that one. So our marketing styles are different. So authenticity is key. So you have to, you have to discover you, discover yourself. People say that Steve Harris is arrogant, Steve Harris is talking, Steve Harris is this. And I'm like, yeah, sure, but you know, Love me or hate me, you can't ignore me, right? You know what I mean? You know what I stand for. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so just own your authenticity. Awesome. Awesome stuff. So I have a question here. Were there times you kind of second-guessed what it was you were doing at the early stages of your business? All the time. I still second-guess myself till today. I'm like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> it's just that I know I felt a lot with people. I, I don't know. So maybe how do you handle, because I'm sure that a lot of people have that, you know, just doubt, you know, can I really do this? I'm so scared to do this. Let me just, let me just manage this. How do you break from that, you know, feeling of no self-confidence? You're not sure. You're not sure. Should I? I want to just hide here. Since when it's working, let me just stick to this small thing. How do you break from that step I'm guessing? Well, um, surround yourself with people whose results inspire and intimidate you. That's what it is. Surround mm. yourself with people whose results inspire mm. and intimidate you. I have a lot of people around me who are making way more money than I am, who are reaching way more people than I am, who are helping way more people than I am. And so I don't look at it and say, ah, oh, see my life, when will I ever? I'm like, no, no, hell no. If they can do it, they're not that much mm. better than I am. They're not definitely not as good looking as I am. So that's for sure. You know what I mean? So if, if, if they can do it, I should tell can. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, great. Another question here says, how did he, how did you scale up your business? I think I'm going to add a little to this question because, you know, when you started, um, you started with just maybe coaching, training, but of course, the Steve Harris we know today is more than just coaching and training. You do the MVP, the masterclass for entrepreneurs and all that stuff. How did you shift from your training, major service, leadership and all that stuff to organizations to now begin like a should I call it an institution? It's the various academy of your own. Like that's like a big transition. What even made you go there? How did you think that you would be able to do this? Because and that's what I'm saying about entrepreneurs. Most people wanted to stay in, in small. Well, this is what let's just chill here and all that. Because of course, I'm sure you're a fantastic trainer and all that. So it would have just been easy to just keep working with banks and people. So how did you break from that and say it's time to do something big? It's time to go to next to next level. How did you scale? Well, up? um, let me put it this way. What motivated me to do that was, you know, the Bible says that one day um, a Pharaoh, after Joseph had died, a Pharaoh arose in Egypt who didn't know anything about Joseph. So he punished the Israelites severely because Joseph was no longer there. 
And what that means is, for every, if you're not the king, right? If you're not the king, you will always be at the mercy of the king in power. You know what I mean? If you're not the decision maker, you will always be at the mercy of whoever comes into power. And I started noticing that in my corporate work, um, I was meeting a lot of pharaohs who were giving me decrees. Do you get what I'm saying? They were, you know, you know, we can't pay you this. If you don't pay, if you don't see that, we pay you this or you, you, you go away. Or we'll find somebody cheaper. Yeah. And I realized that, you know what? Me too, I'm a king. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, when yeah. Moses met Pharaoh, the reason Pharaoh could not kill Moses, one of the reasons Pharaoh could not kill Moses was, number one, Moses understood the protocol of, of the power, palace. Number two, Moses was, was a prince. Mm -hmm. Number three, Moses had diplomatic immunity based on this God who, who was sending him. So, when, so the Bible says that when Moses mm -hmm. comes to meet Pharaoh, um, God said to Moses that I will make, Aaron, I will make um, you a God and Aaron will be your prophet. So let me help you understand. So let me give you a quick example. Mm -hmm. So when Pharaoh would talk, when Pharaoh would talk mm -hmm. in to his subjects, Pharaoh would not directly talk because it would be the voice of God talking to the people. So what Pharaoh would do, Pharaoh would speak to his vizier or his prime minister, and the prime minister will speak to the people. Moses, understanding the protocols of the palace, would not speak to Pharaoh because Pharaoh is a god. So Moses had to remember, God said, I will make mm -hmm. you a god to Pharaoh and Aaron will so when the Bible says that God told Moses that you will not speak, Aaron will speak for you. So Moses will speak to Aaron. Aaron will speak to the vizier. The vizier will speak to... I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So there was that thing about kings and okay. kings, right? But what I found was previously yeah. the kings were talking to me as a prime minister. Do you get what I mean? They didn't see me as a king. So I decided that, you know what? Mm. I can't be treated like a common prime minister or just every other subject that people are talking to you know what i'm done so for many of them i just so to speak stopped and i decided that you know what i want to be able to determine who i do business with i don't want my clients to think they are doing business with me i am choosing to do business with you so if you're calling me Amazing. if you're calling me i am not coming on your terms i am coming on my terms if i sent you a proposal Finishing. i am coming on your terms if you called me, I am coming right. on my terms. So you're not going to say this is my project. Right. Say, mm, this is what I'm going to take for it. This is my budget. Let me see what you guys can do. As opposed to being the other way, where they'll say, this is our budget. Come on, do it. I'm like, no, 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 no more. You know, so I had to step back and say, you know what, in what area am I a king? And it was in this area. And I've gotten so many results and by the right. grace of God. So it even makes me a lot more attractive corporations yeah. as well but it's being able to say no to yeah. what is good so that you can say yes to what is better i don't know if you know what i'm saying better wow makes yeah. sense makes sense so how did you discover that you can do this new thing this uh, master class that you do now for your um, entrepreneurs how did you how did that come how did you know that you can do how do you know that you can create a structure a curriculum that would work for people since it's not something that you have done before you you did i mean it was not i'm sure it was not part of the plan initial no. plan it probably came so how did, how did well, that I mean, happen again exposure is very important exposure is very important so i'd always ask the question you know you know back in the day i'd see maybe guys that i respect like you know tony robbins for example and i said to myself one day mm. i said how do i make the world come to me because if i can't really the world as an individual how do i make the world come to me and i recognized that i needed technology mm -hmm. i needed to leverage technology so i would see tony robbins mm -hmm. you know in a you know in a, in a in a stadium with sixty thousand people right and i know that there's a significant distance between where i am and where tony robbins is but i said to myself if i could just get 10 cents mm -hmm. or one percent of those sixty thousand people in my own virtual state yeah, then yeah. i can also have my own tony robbins experience and um as a case maker with right. my master classes, I started small, 30, class, 30 people, 50 people, 100 people. But then it, began, it, you know, it got to the place where, of course, I recognized I couldn't do it by myself. Because just like um, Moses, mm. I, was, I was just spending too much time with the people without being strategic. And I recognized that I needed to scale. And in order for me to scale, mm. in order for me to scale I needed to bring a team of people who I trusted, people who I was not afraid to, yep. if they would take my business, people who 
who are just as good as I am and perhaps even better, right? Um, who I do not consider as my competitors, uh, but I see them as my collaborators, people who, who are valuable and, you know, bringing them on my team um, mm -hmm. has freed me mm -hmm. because for me, I think for every entrepreneur, um, your final destination is really not money. Your goal should be freedom. You know what I mean? Freedom mm. and money. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you have money but you don't have freedom, you are trapped. You just have another. You have another right. job you can't leave. But freedom is the ultimate goal. So for me, I always ask myself, how can I earn more by doing less? And that that for me. Mm. So yeah. Amazing stuff. So we need to uh, we need to start winding this now. I have too many questions. I don't know if I can keep up with everything. Gosh. Okay. So someone is asking that when you started off, what were the? Did you have failures, roadblocks? Um, and of course, I'm I'm sure that the journey wouldn't have done in a breeze. Boom. We just started and wow, everything was just working back and all that. So they want to know the the roadblocks that you had, the failures that you had, the challenges that you had, and how you went through it. That's one. Um, I think I think one was in in the area of partnership. Um, I had a very I, I have a very good friend that we were partners. Um, unfortunately, it didn't go very well. Um, simply because we you know we're doing good cop bad cop. So for the clients, I was the bad cop and he was the good cop. Um, and ultimately, if they needed to deal, ask him to say, "I'll talk to Steve now. You people should reduce this price." You know, so he was the good guy. I was the bad guy. Um, and eventually, when he decided to leave. Yeah. Um, they left with him. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. So um, wow. that, that put me in a place, and I think it all worked out for good, to be honest. Because that put me in a place where I said, again, I don't ever want to be at the mercy of Pharaoh. If Pharaoh does not see, mm -hmm. then you know, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm dispensable to him. You know, so for me, that was that was a, that was a very tough time. It took me about a year to recover from that. But yeah, apart from that, God has been good, and even through that, God has been good. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, amazing stuff. Okay, so um, what is it that you do that gives people a reason to keep you in that circle? I'm sure that you were saying something here because you have to scroll all the way back. Sometimes you find those people, but it's more like they are. I'm sure the person. Is they are on your. Uh, the, the person talking right. is referring to mentorship. Okay. So you you have to add value to your mentors. You know what I mean? That's the truth. You know. Um, I always give the analogy yeah. that your mentor is somebody who's in front of you and his eyes are in his his eyes are focused on his destination. So if you are behind your mentor, you're calling mm -hmm. him to get his attention, he's not going to look back and come and, and look back, stop looking at what he's doing, look back at you and then come back and meet you or wait for you to come. He's not going to do that. Yeah. What you have to do is ask yourself where where what is he looking at? What's his goal? What's he looking at? And yeah. then how can I help him meet his yeah. goal? So for example, when I first met Fella, and I had the opportunity to now sit down with him. I just asked myself a very simple question. I said, fella has an amazing message. You know, he's got an amazing message. He's profound, but I, I don't have any of his merchandise. You know, this was several, you know, this is a lot of years ago. There were no books, there were no podcasts, there were no DVDs, there was no audio CDs. So he had a great message, but no merchandise. Mm -hmm. I recognized that. No, he didn't tell me that. I sat down and I said, I can't find a fella to a book or merchandise anywhere. And then I sat down and I, when I had a meeting with him, I told him, I said, I have a plan to help you earn at least a million naira worth, um, million naira from your CDs. He said, I don't have CDs. I said, exactly. I said, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help mm -hmm. you crack your message, put your messages into audio formats and help you sell them. And I didn't know that that was an answer. Wow. So my point is your mentors will not tell you that. You have to look and say, where are they looking and how can I help them get, help, how can I help them get there faster? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So let me ask, how do you manage your wife your family marriage responsibility how do you how do you do it track it balance so i think another thing that entrepreneurs struggle with especially when there's a lot they're very busy and all that is balancing ensuring that family's priority my home is number one and i still need to also not make this money still but how do you track that balance? um i think a lot of entrepreneurs make a mistake and the mistake is you know when you know when you're working a job most times it's not the job you wanted. It's like, you know, when we got into university, especially in Nigeria, you didn't get your first choice or perhaps even your second choice. You, they gave you the course that you studied. Um, usually the job was not a job you wanted. It was the job that was available. They gave you the job you accepted. 
Um, but when it comes to your business, mm. you can't be that cavalier to say, I want a business that they just gave me. Um, so what I did was I, I did not design um, a life around, I, around my business. I, des I designed a business to be built around my life. Do you get what I'm saying? A lot of entrepreneurs mm. design a life around their business. I design the business around mm. my life. So what does that mean? It means, mm. it means that with, when I have, an, I have offices, Okay, I think we're back now. Oh wow, so sorry everyone about that. I don't know if it was me <laughs> or it was from the other side. I'm not so sure because everything just froze. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me though. Can you hear me? Oh, hi everyone. Just let me know if you can hear me. So that I'm sure because I mean for for like two minutes everything just went off like it froze. <laughs> I'm too sorry about that. I think it was the network. But let me know if you can hear me now. Um, can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Please let me know that you can hear me. Um, Okay. Oh, Rosie, I can see your question, but um, oh, great, device is back. Great. Uh, when did it? Okay, thank God. I think you need to work me. You can hear me, but my voice is a bit low. Okay, I don't know what just happened. I thought it was the one from my end. <laughs> so sorry, everyone. You can't. Okay, great. Oh, wow. Welcome back. So sorry. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> just for so that's all right so you were talking about your marriage balancing marriage on your business yeah so so basically what i did was i decided to build a business around my life um where where the you know i think they say the earth revolves around the sun so my life the sun mm. and my business revolves around it other people other people yeah, build yeah. the other way around you know they revolve around so for mm -hmm. me it was important that my